Hey everyone. Hi. My name is Amit Kumar and uh, in this video we are going to talk about alerts with Kibana 8.6. Uh, in this video we are specifically uh, talking about alerts that are being created uh, through APM and that is very important uh, because APM monitors your in and out traffic for either it is for the server related or with also related to the real time user monitoring at the client side. So we'll understand how you can uh, set up an alert based on latency, based on uh, thresholds, and how you can send that information through different connectors to your uh, target tech group or uh, a team which monitors it 24 by 7. Let's go ahead. How does the alert work in Kibana? Uh, alerting works uh, by running the checks on schedule uh, to detect the conditions defined by a rule. When a condition is met, the rule tracks it as an alert and the response by triggering one or more actions. Actions typically involve the interactions with Kibana uh, services and third party integrations. Connectors enable the actions uh, to talk about these services integrations. So basically, this is the definition which is there for the alert. Uh, in a nutshell, if you have to understand, just think of an alert that some, some uh, unwanted situation has happened with your uh, services I, when i mean to say services like infrastructure your servers your uh, api latency time uh, timeouts are happening or your um, error codes like uh, unwanted error codes like 5xx 4xx these things are coming up more in in production which is not a healthy signal for you in that situation you need to be aware about that what is happening and how you should handle it Important parts of ELK alerting. We are using this ELK uh, setup to understand like how alerting can be done with ELK right now. Uh, this uh, video is targeted using Elastic as a uh, example. So first we have to create a rule. A rule. This video, uh, this particular image which, has, which you, uh, you are looking at currently, we have taken it from uh, Elastic uh, official uh, portal itself. So thanks to them creating uh, such a extensive and detailed documentation on this. So rule, uh, conditions, schedule, and action. As I said, like create, uh, for doing creating the alert, first you have to uh, define a rule. So what is the rule after uh, a latency of how much you want to be notified? What is the schedule time it should uh, run? Or it should uh, it, sh it should be based on an event or based on a scheduled basis? It will check every interval after every minute, or every, every 10 minutes, every hour, like that. Then create an alert. After the alert is uh, generated, what is the action? Through connectors, you can generate that action. And that can be done uh, through different types of connector. You can create, uh, send this information via email. You can create, send this information via uh, Slack or any other uh, mechanism where you are regularly monitoring the details. Stages of an alert, as I defined earlier, creating a rule, adding a condition, adding a schedule, and then finally creating an action on top of it. Let's see how we'll create a rule. A rule is nothing but a task which runs on Kibana based on certain conditions which you specify. So as I mentioned earlier, we have been uh, talking about latency as a uh, example. We can have multiple other examples. You can do it at the complete server level, uh, at uh, CPU level, memory level, or you can also do it at particular API response time level. This is one of the test uh, dashboard which has been created inside APM uh, with a test log, where you can see you have overview transactions with all the set of informations which we are fetching in that temporary, like uh, testing application. I have gone to the transactions and in, in the, inside the transaction on the top side, you will see after anomaly detection, you have an option of alert and rules. Let's click on that. When you click on that, you'll see there is the option of creating a threshold rule, creating an anomaly rule, creating an error count rule, or different uh, or managed rules where you have listed down all the earlier created rules. So we are for this video perspective, we are going to create uh, a rule which is based on threshold. So when I click on threshold, I get an option that threshold will be based on latency or field transaction rate. And uh, uh, currently, if I would say these both are equally important, uh, there are many situations which we have seen uh, in, in, in production level where uh, you'll see that latency increase which can cause uh, harm to your overall experience of the user. Or at the same time, uh, when you see 
the failure transaction rate if some service is down which is not directly impacting your overall uh, uh, product requirement like if you're selling something your your complete transaction is not getting blocked but it's some of the feature maybe uh, the reviews related to that uh, particular product is not coming at a right point of time which might impact your user experience and indirectly impact your overall transaction percentages so that's why it is it makes sense to look into that and create a rule associated to that also let's take a next step when you click on that you'll see uh, there is a complete new dashboard which is uh, not dashboard i would say uh, overlay which comes up it says uh what is the name of that uh, rule which you are going to create the tags which is which it will be tagged to uh in what interval it will check i have configured it for one minute notify me if the status changes and latency threshold so basically here the queries is being created service what is the service service is test alert type is request which i have you which you can see on your apm dashboard in the first drop down is saying request that is associated to that environment ideally you can make it production uh, for testing purpose i have made it all when average is above 1500 milliseconds so if this particular uh, like latency is it's going above that uh, threshold give me an alert in last five minutes whatever is happening in the same when you scroll down you will see there are multiple actions now we have the conditions defined we have the uh, frequency defined then in that sense we'll in, uh, what is left it, uh, le uh, the next thing which is left is like where to notify you the system will find out okay yes this is the problem which is happening but how should we notify how should the system notify it to you saying that the problem has came and you need to take action upon it right so that notification is important uh, elastic beautifully has integrated with a lot of different uh, options in connector type uh, you have email you have uh, jira you have slack webhook a lot more so basically uh, in this particular video perspective we'll go through slack Okay, so when you click on this, you'll have an option to uh, like what action to perform. There is another pop up which will come up. It's, it will not a pop up. It kind of a uh, accordion ex it'll ex expand. It will ask if you don't have a connector, which I'm expecting. If you are creating the first time, then you should create a connector first. Okay, and if you have, then it will list down in the Slack uh, Slack connector because I am using as a uh, Slack to send the information uh, to the corresponding teams. So here, this this thing will come up when you click on the on that particular ad connector. Again, here you might have to log into Slack if you have already an account uh, with Slack. Well and good, you can go ahead inside this particular page and you can actually go through login into Slack and go to this particular URL which is mentioned on my screen, the point number two, and uh, go to your channel and find out the. Uh, particular URL where your uh, webhook uh, de details will be present. Basically, I'm going to define these all rules in the next slide. So first create an account with Slack. If you're not having one, create a workspace, uh, create an app inside it. Go to this particular URL, which is mentioned in mentioning uh, api.slack.com slash apps. Incoming webhooks. Select an incoming webhook and uh, you will land up into when you're selecting this option which i'm highlighting on the left side you'll land up into this particular page where, where your webhook associated to that particular app which you have created inside your workspace that will be listed down copy it and paste it here when you add it here give a connector name and save it when you save it you'll have you can to test it out you can go to your connectors check with the name which you have given right now uh, under the connectors list and there you can just put a link uh, to any message inside that and run a test when you run if it is successful it will something like on your slack it will pop up if you're logged in and uh, you'll get that uh, message which you have placed in this particular slide so inside connectors if you have mentioned hello test or whatever it will come to slack and this shows that your interaction integration is successful so with this approach basically you can start uh, understanding the data of error issues or whatever is happening inside your system through ELK alert, uh, configure it through in a regular interval, send this data through a connector. Uh, it can be a connector of Slack, email, whatever it is, and send it further to your particular uh, intended target 
developers group or a monitoring group or anything as such and hence you can act upon it so thanks for watching guys hope it helps you uh, happy learning